psychologists, therapists, counselors, etc. What are some things people tend to think are normal but should really be checked out? Inability to regulate your own emotions. Also, negative self-talk. We talk to ourselves way worse than any person could. Would an inability to identify most of your emotions count? Therapist. How do you feel? Me. Oh, so we're starting with the complicated shit right off the bat. A good rule of thumb as to whether a behavior or symptom should be checked out is the same we use to determine a diagnosable disorder. If it causes impairment in one or more areas of life. What if I'm very high functioning? Like I make it to work every day and have a social life and I'm able to clean up after myself. But I have no purpose. I'm not actually interested in things. I just exist to pay my bills and smile for the audience. It's like I'm just staring at life's clock waiting for my time to be up. I feel like the world is ending, but it's not scary. I'm frustrated it's taking so long. I'm just tired of existing. Is this fine as long as I show up to work and do my laundry? I would say getting no enjoyment from anything is an obvious impairment on a major area of life and bound to affect relationships as well. I'm curious how much procrastinating and or lack of motivation to do stuff is normal and how much isn't. From what my therapist told me, if you would simply rather be doing other stuff that's perfectly normal, but if you absolutely could not bring yourself to do homework there's something wrong. I used to have severe anxiety attacks about homework, to the point where when I needed to do it I'd either be completely drained and go to sleep, regardless of time of day, or have a huge breakdown. Thinking that 5 hours of sleep per night is okay. Rapid weight gain or loss with no obvious medical cause. Relationship problems, don't get me fucking started. People normalize abusive behaviors by loved ones all the time. Being able to identify your own personal boundaries and then enforce them with others for your own well-being is, unfortunately, not innate. When your partner downplays your interests and only encourages you towards things they think you should be interested in. When your partner constantly interrupts your flow of conversation and does all the talking, which soon amounts to all the decision making. When your partner ignores or gives muted appreciation for the nice things you do but blows your mistakes and faults way out of proportion. When your partner draws on your deepest insecurities to win arguments. Therapist here. If you grew up with or currently are a part of a family where the whole family has to work to keep one or more members of the family in a good mood or appeased, that's not healthy. People are in charge of their own feelings. It is not your job to appease others so that they can emotionally regulate themselves. That was me growing up. Everyone had to make dad happy. Never knew if something was going to set him off. And when we pissed him off, shit would go on for weeks. Outbursts, throwing breakable items, verbally degrading you, and sometimes it would get physical. That man threw me into a wall while he was shit-faced drunk. Would have gone all the way through but there happened to be pipes. And then he would use us like therapists telling us all the traumatizing shit he went through as a child and expecting that to explain his behavior. He'd be the first to admit that he needed therapy and medication but never fucking did anything about it. Fortunately, he's no longer in my life. There have been a lot of my patients who have been pretty surprised when I've told them, hey, that's anxiety depression, when they just thought their behaviors were typical for everyone. 1. Not being able to maintain friendships. 2. Constantly being nervous about the safety of your child, to the point where you hate being alone with your child without your partner. 3. Not being able to motivate yourself to do things, especially things you once enjoyed. 4. Feeling excessively tired all the time. 5. Not being able to calm down and just thinking about the same thoughts over and over and feeling worried. Other things we can help with. 6. Having a hard time trusting others. 7. Trying to recover a relationship from infidelity. 8. Not knowing why your kid is misbehaving so much and needing guidance. 9. Helping to improve communication within your relationships. If you experience these things, and more, therapists can help. Shadow people. One question we asked was if they ever saw, heard or smelled anything others didn't. This came up more often than you might think. Research psychologist checking in. If your toddler is doing socially unusual behaviors such as not responding to name, not responding to a social smile, not pointing using gestures, 
using your hands arms as if they were a tool or extension of their body, engaging in repetitive behaviors, not responding to your use of gaze to direct their attention to distal objects. Check with the pediatrician about getting assessed for autism spectrum disorder. From the patient's side, it took having a massive anxiety attack at my doc's office to find out that no, massive anxiety attacks in front of strangers isn't common or normal. The attitudes of their parents. No, really. There are a lot of bad things that current parents do that are just seen as normal, when they're not. And they have long-lasting psychological effects from emotional damage. Self-sabotaging behavior can ruin your life quickly. If you have an event in your life that has affected you negatively, and you seem to find yourself exhibiting irrational or incongruent behaviors, see a counselor. You don't have to have any certain pathology to seek mental wellness counseling. I've seen a lot of people dismiss their depression and other mental illness because it's not that bad, or other people have it worse, or I could should be able to handle it on my own. You shouldn't have to suffer through mental illness even if you technically can. You deserve to be happy and therapists and psychiatrists are there to help you learn how to help yourself. It's not a weakness to find someone who can assist you in figuring out coping skills or prescribe you medications to help fine-tune your brain's neurotransmitters. The need for some parents to speak with their children about adult problems. No, your young child does not need to be aware that you are struggling financially or that daddy slept with the lady next door. The parents that tell their children that they are going to go and speed my car into a tree purposely, kill myself while you are at school, or slit my wrist when I shower tonight. And parents that feel they need their children fixed as it's the child and not the family unit as the whole that needs support and or assistance. Just a few recent ones I've heard. Psychotherapist here. Some things I see regularly that could have been caught earlier before they became a problem. 1. Unhealthy coping mechanisms. For example, drinking, to relax, frequently or smoking a lot. Even something like promiscuity can be a red flag that a person is trying to avoid dealing with something stressful by distracting themselves. 2. Self-harm. Hitting yourself, banging your head on things, burning yourself on purpose, cutting yourself, etc. All of those things indicate that it's time to talk with a professional. 3. Normal. Child-teen behaviors that are not actually normal like running away or getting into fights. 4. Not communicating. When this happens, something is usually wrong, not always, as some folks are quieter than others. But if a child teen adult rarely speaks or if they are silent in the presence of their parent or significant other, it's time to get them to see a professional alone to have their safety assessed. I've seen individuals who are literally shut down due to having been profoundly abused by the people they live with and one of the main signs of that is silence. I've also seen people in perfectly good homes who cannot communicate due to extreme anxiety, and without professional help it's hard for them to overcome this. 5. Mood Swings When a person's moods change from one extreme to another fairly often regularly that is another concerning symptom. Sometimes they are considered eccentric or hormonal, but that sort of thing can be a sign of many problems from bipolar disorder to post-traumatic stress disorder. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.